back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth so viewer discretion is advised but if you're not into that or weird shit in general this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our time fondly. I am so excited for today's video and yeah early morning air horns Anyway, I'm excited for today's video because we talk about the new Geode collection from What's Up Beauty. Now, if you've never heard of What's Up Beauty, they are an indie brand and they actually have a brick and mortar store in Arizona. I think it's Chandler. <laughs> if you can go, go. I'll put the address and everything that you need to know in the description box. But first and foremost, I wanna say thank you so much to What's Up Beauty for one, sponsoring today's video and two, sending me these beautiful products. And three, allowing me to be the garbage human that I am. I really appreciate that and thank you for taking a chance on me. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, any whoosies. Now, if you've never heard of What's Up Beauty, I recently talked about them in my basic bitch palette because their, which I want to call it Desert Monsoon, but it's not. It's Desert Monsoon. Their Desert Monsoon palette, breathtaking. And definitely within the top five of basic bitch palettes of all time. Okay, it's just that good. So when I heard this brand was releasing another palette, my makeup dick got really excited. And I was hoping that this quality would be the same as the Desert Monsoon palette. Now before I jump into the palette, I do want to point out there is also six nail polishes that were created for this collection. And even though this is not a part of the collection, I do want to talk a little bit about them. But they also have brushes. Now I've had these, I want to say probably since, I don't even know, maybe May or June of last year. Like I've, I've had these for a while. And a lot of people will always ask in the comments like, hey, what's that pink brush? What's that pink brush? Well, today I'm gonna talk about it because these brushes are really fantastic. So in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on all three products and we're gonna start with the palette first. The Geode's eyeshadow palette retails for $41. If staring into a cracked open inside of a Geode ever made your imagination run wild, then our new collection will bring these sensations to your makeup routine. The experience starts from the packaging with a holographic gem encrusted seam running the length Length of the palette. When you open the convenient travel friendly packaging, you're met with a versatile set of pressed powders letting you create a sophisticated neutral look or add a little sparkle for your nightlife. Now this palette is made in Italy but it's assembled in the US. And the packaging is fantastic. It's everything that I loved about the Urban Decay uh, Gems palette except that palette's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but the packaging wasn't and that's what I like about this one is that the packaging is kind of very similar to it It's like a little sister if you will now when you do open this travel friendly palette Which I do want to point out it is very travel friendly because this bitch is small. It's secure It's everything that I am not and I love that <laughs> I wish I could say I was lying. But anyway, when you do open this palette up, you get a nice full size mirror here and you get your beautiful little color story. Now there are five duo chromes, two shades that are like iridescent, and then you have five creamy mattes. So let's break it down by shade. Rock, a light brown creamy matte. Crystal, a blue to purple iridescent duochrome foil. Amethyst, a dark purple duochrome metallic. Citrine, a light gold iridescent metallic. Peridot, green to blue duochrome foil. Clay, a khaki brown cream matte. Rose quartz, a light pink pearl satin. Agate, pink to orange duochrome foil. Rhodonite, dusty rose creamy matte. Earthlight, a brown metallic with green to purple duochrome shimmer. Lava, a mustard creamy matte. Terra, a brown creamy matte. So starting with the mattes, y'all, these mattes are good, okay? I love the mattes in the first palette and I'm happy to say that the formula is exactly the same to this palette. While technically the shimmers, yes, they are the main event, the duochromes, there's something so beautiful about these fucking mattes. And I really, really love creating an all matte look. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you four different looks that I created. Unfortunately today, the look that I have on, I thought I was recording, didn't happen. <laughs> So I will point out what I used. But one of the looks in today's video is an all matte look with the exception of like the inner corner having a little bit of sparkle. But I really wanted to showcase the mattes and how creamy and just beautiful they are. So the mattes are beautifully pigmented. They're creamy. They're buildable. They are incredibly easy to blend. I didn't have any issues with longevity or patchiness. I really loved creating an all matte look with this palette. Like I, I do love the duochromes. There's just something so delicious about this palette. It's kind of like a subtle grunge moment. I love it. It's for those that like kind of want a little bit of edge to their look but also want to maintain like a much more like neutral earthy tone like this is the palette for you and I say that especially when using the shades lava and clay together like those two shades fuck me up bitch I love them and for lava being a mustard yellow 
Yellows are traditionally very difficult to make. This is a very beautiful mustard yellow. I don't have a bad thing to say about this palette. I really do love that some of the tones are much more cooler. If I did have a complaint, which it's not really a complaint, it's more of a preference thing. I do love the shade Terra. I think it's absolutely beautiful. However, I kind of wish there was a darker shade that was a little bit more cool tone, but it's not the end of the world. Now the shade Rock served as my transition shade. It was a great place to start off. Honestly, between Rhodonite and Rock. Rhodonite was a perfect matte to add dimension to the crease. And I could also use clay to add a little dimension to the crease as well. It's a very pretty khaki olive brown. And of course, the darkest shade in the palette you have is Terra. I do like Terra. I also think it makes for a beautiful lash line shade, especially putting it on the top lash line and smoking it out. I love also being able to create like a nice like smoky eye with this palette as well. Again, my only real kind of criticism or critique is that I kind of wish Terra was a little bit more cool tone. But again, personal preference. A lot of people do love warm tones. I'm just a cool tone fish, okay? And I, I prefer that. But I'm very happy happy with what I can create with this. And I do understand why it is kind of more of a warm tone brown, especially when dealing with these purples. It's super fucking pretty. But either way, the mattes are where it's at. So moving on to the duochromes, there are two different formulas. You have the iridescence and then just like a regular kind of foiled metallic duochrome. But I'm gonna talk about the iridescent formula first because it's slightly a little bit different. And there are two shades and that is, which one? It's Rose Quartz, which is this baby right here, and Citrine, which is the yellow one right there. Those two shades are so good. The formula is super easy to apply. Whether it's with glitter glue, a saturated brush, or your finger, you're going to have the same effect every time. There is a light dusting of bukkake, but overall not too bad to clean. Now the shade Rose Quartz, it has a, I guess like a more of a transparent base. So when you do apply it to a bare lid, yes, you see a little bit of your lid poking through. It makes for a beautiful inner corner highlight, which is what I have on my face today. I love how the shine is very celestial. Like I feel very intergalactic, very alien slut, if you will. Now, while there is sparkle to this formula, I'm very happy to say that it doesn't flake, it doesn't break, it doesn't transfer all over your face throughout the day. Everything does stay into place. And that rhymed, good for me. The texture is very, very smooth. Even when using glitter glue, it doesn't create any sort of stone-like goblin texture. You don't need to remember any sort of answers to riddles. Like, <laughs> you're good to go. The shade Citrine, which is the yellow one, also has a very similar transparent base. Again, makes for a very beautiful inner corner highlight. But I do love it on the lid, though. On the lid, that shade, especially when paired with Peridot, it's like a sprite moment. I love it. Also, the shade Citrine and Lava is so fucking pretty as well. I think there was a video I did recently, I can't remember which one it was, but I put Lava down and then I put Citrine on top of it. Just a combination of the two yellows. I had a lot of comments that were like, what is on your eyes? I want it, I need it. Yes, daddy, please. It was this palette. I really cannot stress enough how good the longevity is in this palette. Also, if you kind of feel up to it, which who doesn't, Rose Quartz also makes for a very, very beautiful, like pinky highlighter. Oh, fuck me up, bitch. I'm, yes. <laughs> I mean, granted, I'm putting it over a little bit of existing highlighter that was a little bit more of a yellow tone, but kind of adding that pink to it. Oh, bitch, it's everything that I want and more. Okay, I need to stop doing this, but it's just so much fun. Something about a pink highlighter. Oh my God. Okay, all right, seriously, I cannot stop eye-pocking myself. All right, anyway, so <laughs> the iridescents also make for a very, very beautiful highlighter shade if you're into that sort of shit, just saying. So now we're gonna move on to the remainder of the palette. There are five duochromes. They're very similar to the iridescent formula, meaning I had no issues with application or performance. These shades just work so well with each other. They make beautiful gradients. Nothing gets overpowered or muddy. And I think the most significant difference between the duochrome shades versus the iridescent shades is that these are a little bit more sparkly. Yes, with the iridescent shades, there is a lot of reflective high shine to them, but there's something about these duochromes that are much more reflective in my opinion. Yes, some are foiled, some are metallic, but overall they are alien slut shadows. And I also consider the difference between these versus the iridescents is the glitter bukkake. Yes, you do get some fallout with these shades. Sometimes it's easy to clean, sometimes it's not. Like today I actually have the shade Earth-like on my face. And for the most part, everything did stay into place, but I did have a little sprinkling of bukkake that was just a little bit difficult to clean. So in that case, either go with a very, 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 very light hand, which with my little hooves, I can't do. <laughs> or just do your eye makeup first and then your base. So for today's video, I did my eye look first and then my base. Now the shifts in the duochrome are incredibly evident. They're just so metallic and wet. And I feel like this palette is very much a wet slut, which is my favorite kind of slut because no one likes a dry one. Mm -mm -mm. 
No sorry. These shades have a much more pigmented base so you don't see your lid poking through. They are incredibly opaque and layer very well over each other. Again, when layering, yes, you can make really pretty gradients because they just blend so seamlessly together, but you're not going to experience any sort of stone texture or any sort of like weird dryness that sometimes happens when layering shimmers together. This whole palette, I feel like, yes, it's neutral, but it screams celestial fantasy. Each duochrome is different, so I didn't feel like anything gets lost in the sauce. And again, you know, I can't stress this enough, longevity is perfect. Even with the humidity that I am now dealing with, because it's starting to get warm. <laughs> I've had this palette on while I was out and about zipping around and everything still looked really good. My face maybe not so much but my eye look looked fucking killer. <laughs> I loved all of the shades but to me the standouts were uh, Peridot, Amethyst, Agate. They have such beautiful like jewel moments. Crystal is stunning as well. Pairs very beautifully with Amethyst. But I will say like Crystal out of the five is probably the one that is similar to the iridescent shades except it's definitely a lot more sparklier. And I say it's similar because it has a little bit of a transparent transparent base so when you do apply it to the lid you do see your lid poking through unless it's on top of something else but still a very very beautiful shade. Today what I have on is earth like and this is just such a beautiful grungy fucking duochrome. I'm obsessed with this like smoky dream that I'm giving you it's so fucking pretty and I think this also pairs incredibly well with lava and clay especially to really give that beautiful grungy moment but for today's look I wanted to keep it simple so I just used rhodonite, terra, and earth like uh, for my look oh, with a little bit of rose quartz for the inner corner and um yeah I would totally fuck me so yeah it's a winner. <laughs> I don't have a bad thing to say about this palette. I love it. The quality is consistent as the first release. So if you have the Desert Monsoon, you know exactly what you're working with. And I really do love that both palettes pair very well with each other. What's also nice about this palette is that you do get a nice variety of looks with this palette and you don't feel creatively stunted when using it. I love the different tones of purple. I love the shifts of the duochrome. I feel like each shade does stand very much on their own. I do love the pops of coolness. I love the grunginess of this palette. I think the only thing that I would probably add to this palette would be probably an additional matte shade because sometimes I like to have more of a cooler toned outer corner but Terra though it's still fucking solid. So if you're ever interested in checking out this brand I would highly recommend them. If this is not your color story check out the Desert Monsoon that shit is fucking solid as fuck. Either way you cannot go wrong with either palette and I love that you know yeah they're kind of they're basic bitch palettes but they're basic bitch with a twist. This is a very good variety of all different types of looks. Yes it can be work appropriate. Yes it could be good for going out. Some of the shades make for a killer highlighter as well. There's a lot of versatility in this. So if you want to have a nice beautiful celestial moment this will be your shit right Right here this is fucking great. So next thing I want to talk about are these beautiful nail polishes. So I'm going to break it down uh, by shade but each one retails for $12.75 and what's really cute about the nail polish is that the shades of the nail polish match the shades of the eyeshadow palette. So it's kind of really nice that you kind of get like a best of both worlds situation. So let me show you each shade. You have Crystal, which is a gem encrusted formula. This is a sheer purple base with a duochrome shimmer that shifts from blue to violet. Agate, a metallic pink with small duochrome flakies that shift from pink to orange. Rhodonite, a matte formula. A dusty rose cream with a matte finish. Earth-like, gem encrusted formula. A sheer brown base with a duochrome shimmer that shifts from green to purple. Peridot, a duochrome that shifts from green to blue. And clay, a khaki brown cream. I love that these nail polishes match the palette. They also did it with the Desert Monsoon collection as well. Unfortunately, I had those polishes. I really do like their polishes. Those broke in transit. So when I was in the process of moving, I lost a lot of my nail polishes. I don't want to think about it because still it makes me sad. <laughs> Sorry, can we have a moment of silence for my nail polish collection, please? Thank you. All right, um, anyway. <laughs> I can't cry with this eye look. <laughs> Point is, I don't see it very often and I'm very happy to see that from this brand. I also love the fact that these nail polishes have different finishes. My favorite obviously is Peridot. Like I am a bog bitch, okay? It's a beautiful duochrome nail polish that just has an evil queen vibe and I'm all about it. Then you have Clay, which is a beautiful khaki brown cream polish. This is a powerful bitch nail polish. If you want everyone to know that you own 51% of the company, this is what you wear. And the same goes for Rhodonite. Well, yes, it's a very dusty romantic rose shade. There's something badass about a 
matte nail polish. If you wear the shade, people will not fuck with you. Agate is also a very beautiful duochrome, and it has these flakies that shift from pink to orange. The flakes remind me of a speckled egg. It's so beautiful in the sun. And then you have two shades that have a very unique formula, and this type of formula is not new for me. I have tried something similar to this from a different brand before. Unfortunately, I can't fucking remember what the brand was called, but they had something similar to this where it's like this gem encrusted polish. It has a little bit of like a texture to it, and it's pretty fucking cool to see how different it is compared to like say a traditional matte or like just like a shiny top coat kind of a polish. If you do like texture, you'll totally be into it. Personally, I don't mind it. I do like that there's a bit of texture to the polish, but if you're not into the texture, obviously if you just go over it like twice with the top coat, it definitely takes the texture out of it and just maintains like a very, very beautiful shine. I think both colors are very, very unique. They're super pretty and they just kind of give you that badass alien slut vibe. Overall, they're pretty opaque in one coat, but you do get full opacity when using two coats. Now, I'm also obsessed with motherfucking shine, so I do add a nice layer of top coat once I'm done, except I don't do that to Rodenite because because why would I fuck up an all matte look, you know? <laughs> that bitch needs to be matte. Like, I'm not gonna fuck with it. I'm happy to report that this is a really nice nail polish, especially if you're looking to get into more indie nail polishes, which sometimes I find are much better than the stuff that you find in the drugstore or stuff that you find in Ulta. These are definitely worth checking out. I do like the longevity of these. I didn't have any issues with chipping or any of my nail polish like popping off. Sometimes that happens with Hollow Taco, for example. This has very solid longevity. I will say that I am missing my pinky nail. <laughs> So sometimes what I like to do is just like paint one accent nail. I meant to paint this one clay, um, but unfortunately I ran out of time. <laughs> because I was heading to Raleigh for the weekend and I was like, okay, either I could paint my nails or I could just pack. And I chose packing, so, you know, uh, past me is very happy with that because had I not had any clothes, um, <laughs> That would have sucked. So like, unfortunately my priorities were a little bit different, but um, yeah, I'm missing um, a nail on this side. <sighs> but yeah, it would have been cool. It would have been cool to have clay. <laughs> I found that these do dry down relatively fast. Are they the fastest I've ever used? No, but compared to other nail polishes, they're really good. I absolutely love the brush. I think they're fucking stellar. It applies nicely and evenly when one coat because of how fat and perfect the brush is, like myself, thank you. I didn't find the product to be too runny where sometimes, you know, when polish is a little bit too thin, it runs into your nail fold. And it wasn't too solid where, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit stringy or just like difficult to apply. Like this is just like a nice creamy nail polish. Again, I think probably for me, I, I do love the colors, but I think just the overall brush head is so fucking nice. And I wish more companies were like that. Just kind of have like a nice fat brush that you're able to get everything in one shot. It's just so good. I love that it hugs the nail so perfectly. So. Um, um, yeah, you know, I'm actually kind of curious like I know sometimes people will ask for nail polish videos But like if you're interested in nail polish like I unfortunately I don't my collection really is, is much smaller than it used to be But I'm in the process of buying more nail polish So if anyone's actually interested in seeing nail polish videos, I'm not let me know down below I'd be more than happy to include them into the mix every now and again because I mean other than the Queen Christine <laughs> I don't see a lot of people really talking about nail polish, so if you're into it, let me know. Anyway, these are so good. And again, love the fact that they match so well to the palette. So last but not least, I do wanna talk a little bit about these brushes. Yes, they're dirty, so don't mind me. So I use all the brushes to create these looks. A few times I had to use something else, and that's because this brand only has specific shapes. While their corset is very nice, because I have hooded eyes, I kind of need sometimes a little bit of a smaller brush just to complete the look. While I was able to create most of my look with these brushes, there's a few times where I had to get right in the lower lash line and I kind of wasn't able to do that with these. Has nothing to do with the brushes, it's just because my eyes are so fucking small, but they're perfect, like me. <laughs> Anyway, so let me tell you a little bit about these brushes. They're all natural handmade in Japan. They're uncut, undyed goat hair from cruelty-free sources. Now, the brushes retail anywhere from like $20 to $23 a piece, but you can get the complete set for 10% off for I believe like $119.70. So in this collection, you have the R101, a pencil eyebrow brush, retails for $20. An R102, crease blending eyeshadow brush, retails for $22. R103, blending eyeshadow brush, retails for $23. The R104, Fluffy Blending Eyeshadow Brush retails for $23. The R105 Tapered Blending Eyeshadow Brush retails for $23. The R106 Flat Shader Eyeshadow Brush retails for $22. Y'all know I do love a good natural hair brush. It's pretty much what I use from the day to day. And I have a lot of favorite brushes from a lot of different brands. And I always say that you should invest in your tools. 
And had this not been sent to me, I would have definitely picked this up with my own money and I would feel incredibly delighted about it. The quality of the brushes are super nice. They pick up the product with ease. And for the most part, most of these brushes are very, very good for hooded eyes. The pencil brush is great for an inner corner moment or any small detail work. This crease brush is one of my favorite crease brushes to be ever invented. I feel like I have a small stockpile from say this brand, I have from Refer, Sonia G, Wayne Goss, and I just, I love this particular shape. This one's so fucking good. So if you do have small hooded eyes, R102 is where it's at. Then you have the R103, which is a blending brush. Much like the 102, the 103 is also really good. It's a little bit bigger, so while it does do the job, I do kind of prefer like a smaller brush head. Then you have the blending brush, which is a tiny a little bit big for my eye shape so I had to use a little bit above my crease to get like a very beautiful seamless blend I also like using it for the outer corner instead of kind of having sometimes like a sharp edge if I want it a little bit blown out this is a very good brush to do that with then you have like the fluffy blending brush which is the biggest brush out of the whole collection this one's really really good if I want to say like diffuse the lower lash line or if I want to use this ever so gently to set my under eye this is really good for that because the bristles feel very nice and soft and comfortable so finally you have like the tapered blending brush and the flat shader and both of these brushes are very very good for just layering color on the lid I'm very finicky when it comes to brushes and especially when the bristles are just hard and plasticky or just sometimes with natural hair brushes it can feel very coarse these are very very soft even after having them since last year they're still very very soft I love that these brushes don't cause any irritation. They really do pick up the product very easily. You're not gonna spend so much time like jerking something off because it's like so hard to blend out. These little babies do the work for you. My only complaint if I had one is that I wish there were more and I really do hope that this brand does consider coming out with more eyeshadow brushes but maybe geared towards those who have hooded eyes. But if you do have hooded eyes, the corset is nice, it's workable, but you know, I'm just, I'm a baby and I want what I want. I wish there were more brushes designed for hooded eyes because I feel like sometimes they're really hard to find. And I'm also selfish, so that also, you know, gotta throw that in there too. Anyway, so with that said, if you are interested in checking out this brand, you could pick up the palette for $41 or the nail polishes for $12.75 a piece or the whole bundle, if it tickles your pickle, is retailed at $99. If you're interested in the brushes, again, each brush can be anywhere from $20 to $23 or if you want the whole set, you can get it for 10% off and that's for $119.70. Again, thank you so much to What's Up Beauty for sponsoring today's video and sending this my way. I really appreciate it. I cannot wait to see what else y'all come out with and I really hope it's more brushes. So just saying and another palette just saying and more nail polishes just saying <laughs> so basically just keep doing what you're doing now i want to hear from y'all let me know down below if you've ever tried anything from what's up beauty if you have let me know how you feel about them if you haven't let me know if you're interested in picking them up or just tell me why you love geode so much let me know because i love hearing from you and with that said i want to say thank you so much for watching i truly appreciate it as always feel free to like comment hit that subscribe button it's free and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts follow me on twitter instagram patreon to all my beautiful wonderful patron buttons Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross, really nasty, really disgusting, really gross, really nasty, disgusting, garbage boat of flow. I couldn't do without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces. And I just can't wait to gobble you all up. If you want to know what is currently on my face, everything you need to know will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye.